my name is Lauren Maness, and it is my first year being the soprano choral scholar here at Holy Trinity. I am a sophomore vocal performance major from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm so thrilled to be here. Hi, my name is Eric Rydell. I'm a freshman vocal performance and music education choral general double major, and I'm from Bethel, Ohio. It is such an honor to be here as a first year tenor choral scholar at Holy Trinity. Action. Hi, my name is Catherine Ellery. I am a sophomore music education major here in Miami. I am the Alto Choral Scholar, and I'm so excited to be starting my second year at Holy Trinity, and I can't wait to be back in the congregation with everyone else. Hi, my name is Nate Wilkins. I'm a senior vocal performance major from Cincinnati, Ohio. This is my third year with Holy Trinity. It's been a pleasure to sing as your bass choral scholar these past three years, and I look forward to continuing, even through these troubling times.
reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. 
If anyone else has a reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I, might, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded them as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. morning. Now, uh, this was supposed to be the Sunday that Bishop Reintal was going to be with us for the uh, visit by a bishop, which canonically we're supposed to have on a regular basis. And unfortunately, because of illness, he cannot be with us. And unfortunately, that also meant that I got to preach on today's gospel. But let me put it to you this way. Even though I realized that was coming, uh, there is the old Hebrew saying, you plan, God laughs. And so I had basically figured out what I was going to preach on this today and realized that that was not going to happen last night. So bear with me as I get the Holy Spirit revised version of this Sunday's Gospel homily. Now, today's Gospel is a continuation of what was happening last week. And so just in case you've forgotten or or missed that, let me give you a recap. So Jesus is in Jerusalem. He's just ridden a foal of a donkey into Jerusalem where everyone has proclaimed him king, waving palms, a magnificent event. And then, The next day, comes into the temple in Jerusalem, and he basically has his temple tantrum 
otherwise known as the cleansing of the temple, throws out the money people, and he offends the temple elite and the elite of the people. He calls them thieves. And now he's sitting in the temple in the seat of the prophets and the rabbis, telling parables, of which this today was the second, that deliver thinly veiled, really thinly veiled, accusations and warnings of God's anger and unwillingness to put up with their leadership. More accurately, their failure of leadership. And he's not very happy with them. And, and so, but this is an interesting parable. It's a continuation of the, uh, you've been talking the talk, but you haven't been doing the walk, and you were given this authority, and now you have not been following what God wants. And it's a declaration from the prophet. And you've heard the, uh, uh, the reading this morning from Isaiah. And that is exactly what Jesus is talking about and what he is referring to. And everybody there knows what he's saying about the vineyard and those who have been given stewardship over the vineyard. And he becomes the prophet that calls them to task. And not just any prophet. He has some very specific things that he's going to say. Essentially, what Jesus has been doing from his triumphant entry into Jerusalem to today and a few more parables is he has been poking the bear. More likely, actually, he's been poking a lot of bears. He's been poking the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, the Sanhedrin, and the Romans. And in case they weren't paying attention to him, well, he has their attention now. And he's going to keep poking those bears until they have no choice but to crucify him. And that is his plan. So what he says here in today's parable is, I gave you, God gave you, authority over my vineyard. And in scripture, the vineyard is the kingdom. God has given them authority and stewardship over the kingdom. And that kingdom, that vineyard, is supposed to produce good fruit, not wild grapes. They're supposed to make it bloom and bear fruit and be the light of God in the world. Jesus says, hmm, see what you have done and not done. And then he goes on to describe what the current occupants of the vineyard have been doing or not doing. And then he flips the tables on them and he says, what would you do if you were the owner of the vineyard? And, and they say, well, we wouldn't put up with it. This is what we do. And then Jesus says, hmm, what do you think God will do when God is disrespected in such a way and when God's son is disrespected in such a way. Jesus tells it like it is. He is prophesying that his time is coming. He says, I know God's truth and God's truth needed to be told. And Jesus says, I am telling God's truth with my life. Now, He's doing what the prophets have done. He's accosting the leadership and the elite. And he knows they will not be happy. They have been very good about claiming to speak for God. And most importantly, claiming that they have been good stewards of God. And particularly of God's people. They were supposed to put the will of God first. Speak for justice, mercy, and compassion. Uphold the law. The law that Micah, the prophet, made clear of what God wanted. The 
prophet Micah said, I care not about your offering and all of those things. I care that you do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with me in this life. I care that you build my kingdom and care for my vineyard. And Jesus is now saying, the Lord God has sent you the prophets, and you did not hear them. The Lord God sent you the prophets, and you killed them. But you sent them away. And the Lord God now sends you his son. And in that he's going to be preaching here, and what he's doing is he's speaking in Hebrew. And in Hebrew, the word for son is ben. And he uses that word, ben. He is saying, I am the ben of God. And for those of the religious authorities, particularly the priests and uh, the Sanhedrin, this is blasphemy. He's claiming to be the son of God. And there's a little bit of Hebrew play in here because then he talks about the stone that will become the cornerstone and crush them. And the Hebrew word for stone is ebed. He's making it very clear that there is a connection between the Son of God and the stone that is the cornerstone. And that rejection means a new way, a, a new people with a new authority. Because, you folks, you have squandered yours. There will be a new law. And that law is the great commandment and a new authority the cornerstone, Jesus, the Messiah, and us, the new people that God calls. The new people, the church. And, and this is an important thing, particularly for those who are hearing Matthew's gospel, because for them it has been a struggle as Jewish Christians to give up that authority of the old and work towards the new the new authority, the great commandment, thou shalt love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And they have seen what it means to have the cornerstone crush the others. Because at this point, the temple has been destroyed. And Jesus says, I am the new temple. And this new life, this this new stewardship that we are called to, that comes to us through our baptism. It's the new law that we are baptized into and the new life in Christ Jesus. And in baptism, we are marked as Christ's own forever. We are the stewards who cannot walk away. We are the stewards of the new vineyard. We are the church, not the building, we are the Ecclesia. And take a look at maybe how we're doing. You know, it's very easy to look down on, on the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes and all of them and say, oh, how, how bad they were not to hear the words of the prophet. How are we doing? And, and I know that it's hard. You know, that loving your neighbor part is really hard. That, that's the walk, the walk part. It's easy to say I love my neighbor until we have to <clears throat> love the neighbor we don't want to love. And it's a struggle. And I, I know that it's a struggle because last night, what derailed my old homily was a meeting uh, by Zoom, naturally, uh, of uh, other interims. It's a support group that happens uh, late on Friday afternoon, the first Friday of the month, where we talk about many things. And uh, at some point, we dealt with the 800-pound gorilla in the room. How will we pray and respond to the fact that the president and first lady have been infected with COVID? And, and let me say, it was a lively discussion some of which centered around the fact that, or the, the scripture verse that said, thou shalt reap what thou shalt, what thou hast sown. 
But for those of us who were preaching on today's gospel, we knew that Jesus was calling us not to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. And what do we do about that? And then the presiding bishop sent out an announcement, and the answer for those of us who are Episcopalian was particularly clear. But I, I want to make clear what Jesus is talking about when he says the new stewards and our responsibility in it. Because you see, we in our baptismal vows say a lot of things. We promise to believe the Nicene Creed. But here's the other part of our baptismal vows. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And our answer to those is, I will with God's help. That forms the priesthood of all believers. But for those of us who have been ordained, that priesthood of all believers gets expanded a little bit. And so I'm going to read to you what is in the priest's ordination. And this is the part where uh, the bishop speaks to all the people. God and Father of all, we praise you for your infinite love and calling us to be the holy people in the kingdom of your Son who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death, he has overcome death and having ascended into heaven, has poured his gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, in order to equip the saints for the work of ministry and building up of his body. The body of Christ, the church, the vineyard. And then the priest gets asked this. May God, ex may you be exalted from the Lord in the midst of your people. Offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation and rightly administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make her a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor, and grant that in all things she may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. It is for all of us what we are called for and for some of us ordained for. And it is then my responsibility to call out and say, we, as the priesthood of all believers, as the baptized, need to remember the glory of the kingdom and what God poked those folks about. And so I thought for this morning, in reminder that it's not enough to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. But I would read what the presiding bishop sent out. During this time of COVID-19 pandemic, I continue to pray for all who are affected by this virus in any way. And at this particular moment, I ask that all Episcopalians also pray for the president and the first lady and all in the White House or in our government who have been infected by this virus. O oh God of heavenly powers, by the might of your command, you drive away from our bodies all sickness and all infirmity. Be present in your goodness with your children, the President and First Lady, and all in the White House or government, government who have been infected by this virus, that their weaknesses may be banished and their strength restored, and that their health being renewed, they may bless your holy name, and that the Holy Spirit may open their hearts the wisdom and glory and compassion of you. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And that is taken from the Book of Common Prayer, Recovery from Sickness, page 458, by the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate of the Episcopal Church. That is a prayer for all of us, to remind us that we don't get to choose who we pray for, who God calls us to pray for, or who is our neighbor, or anyone who is in the image of God is our neighbor. And also to remind us that the Lord Almighty, Jesus Christ, has no problem poking the bear. Let it not be us. Amen. Prayers of the people are according to Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are home, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For the most reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and the Right Reverend Thomas E. Breidenthal, our bishop, and for all the bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless,
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. This is the first Sunday of October. Hard to believe that the weather has kind of given us a hint of what is to come. But since it is the first Sunday of the month, recognition and blessings of birthdays and anniversaries. So if you have a birthday this month, this is for you. Oh Lord, we give you thanks for all the blessings in this life and for those whose birthdays are this month and for their life and ministry among us. We are thankful for the work and ministry that they have given us this year. And we ask you to bless them and give them joy and love and happiness and most of all, hope. And we ask your blessings and your grace upon the year to come, that it may be filled with joy and wonder and love. This we ask in your name. Amen. For all those who celebrate birthdays this month, dear Lord, we give thanks for those who have been married and celebrate their anniversaries this month. We ask your blessings upon them. Give them the grace and the patience to love each other as they are always called to do, to remember the good times, to share in the not so good times. We give thanks for the year that they have had, and we ask your blessings for the year to come. That the joy and the sorrows the ups and the downs, they may share together in your love and in your wonder. This we ask in your name. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. And now for the announcements. Now, <clears throat> this week we are having a uh, ACW meeting, luncheon, at noon in person on the, on the church patio. Uh, and via Zoom, and if you want more information, uh, Betty Julian has sent out an email, but please feel free to call the office on Monday. Uh, don't forget that today we have uh, Zoom at noon, our coffee hour, and I'm looking forward to seeing some new people show up at that time. And additionally, um, as I mentioned earlier, today was the day that Bishop Bridenthal would have been with us, uh, except that he has not been well. And for those of you who did not get the diocesan emails, uh, Bishop Bridenthal has announced his uh, retirement beginning the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, we will send you out more information on that. But in the meantime, our uh, bishop visit has been rescheduled and will happen with Bishop Nettie Rivera on Sunday, November 15th. We will send more information out on that. That is the 
Harris Bay, uh, the Butler County was still in the red, and it was joined, sadly, by Hamilton and Claremont, and all of their churches have had to return to phase one. Uh, we will try and keep you updated as to what that means and how we move forward. But if you are interested uh, when Bishop Nettie is with us, hopefully it will be live, and you would like to either have confirmation, reception, or an affirmation of faith, please call the office and schedule an appointment with me. I would love to hear from you, and we're hoping that we can do those things again. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord.